As a result of the development of this revolutionary mechanism, it is possible for both WHK and WCLE to broadcast through a single three-tower antenna system, thus providing better reception in outlying areas. The actual broadcasting of programs is done from the transmitter on Pleasant Valley Road in Seven Hills Village. The radio transmitter stands as a monument to the creative genius of man, for he has contrived through these dials and levers, meters and tubes, to harness the great forces of electricity and bring a world of entertainment and education to your very fireside. To keep an accurate check on radio transmission, the actual electrical current which brings programs to your home, the United Broadcasting Company maintains portable field equipment. This field car visits all points of the WHK, WCLE coverage areas to assure clear reception at all times. The mobile unit is a part of the WHK, WCLE program of greater public service. It is independently equipped for shortwave transmission and can give on-the-spot broadcasts of any great public emergency. The interior of the mobile unit has complete broadcasting facilities. For example, here on portable equipment, an engineer is making a recording which will later be put on the air by the two stations. A public address system with loudspeakers may be used to broadcast a running account of events of all sorts. Atop the terminal tower is located the elaborate shortwave sending and receiving equipment of the United Broadcasting Company. The shortwave antenna itself is mounted above the ball at the top of the flagpole. One of the most recent developments in the radio industry is facsimile broadcasting, which makes it possible to transmit pictures and reading matter of all kinds by radio waves to be received in your home in much the same form as a newspaper. In the recording room, most of the equipment is United Broadcasting Company engineered. Here the recording engineer uses a very fine brush to clear the platter of shavings and any dust particles that might attach themselves. A very minute bit of dust might cause distortion in sound to show up on the final recording. A close-up of the cutting head illustrates how the actual grooves are made. These large 16-inch discs will record a 15-minute program without a break. And because the United Broadcasting Company maintains three recording turntables, programs of any length may be recorded without interruption. Just as a welcome awaits dialers to WHK, WCLE, so the public is invited to visit the studios. Every year, thousands of persons call on the United Broadcasting Company to meet their favorite radio personalities, to take part in the many audience participation programs, to try out in amateur auditions, or just to have a look around. Many of those who come for more than just to look around are dozens of famous personalities. For instance, here the woman's director discusses program plans with the wife of Cleveland's mayor, Frank J. Lauschi. To serve the two stations of the United Broadcasting Company adequately, six completely equipped studios are required. The first question a visitor usually asks is why we have six studios when only two stations are on the air at one time. The best answer is that for every 15-minute program that goes on the air, two hours or more of rehearsal are necessary. And for the same reason, studios are equipped to handle any kind of a radio show. Both WCLE and WHK use these studios, but it's very seldom that more than three of them are in use at the same time for actual programs. Rehearsals keep the remaining studios busy. For instance, in Studio 4, one of the sound engineers is busily rehearsing the sound effects for a popular dramatic program on the master sound effects machine or bandwagon, which handles effects not conveniently reproduced. However, whenever possible, actual sounds are used. Let's go into Studio 3. A portable electric organ, a most versatile instrument, stands ready for use in any studio it may be needed. Through those glass windows, you can see the control room and the operator who blends words and music so effectively. That panel is the control engineer's mixer. All control rooms have them, 
and they are used to maintain proper volume of sound. Thus a quartet, first and second tenor, bass and baritone, four completely different voices may work together. The mixer blends the sounds, elevating some voices and lowering others. The engineer is comparable to an artist. For he may, if he wishes, pull in a complete violin section. A single timpani and a piano and blend these musical parts together as an artist might blend colors on a canvas. In Studio 2 we find that WHK's famous junior showboat program is in full progress. To this veteran radio show flock the young hopefuls of Cleveland who may someday develop into nationally known artists. Each year they come by the hundreds, some to fail, some to achieve instant success. But regardless of success or failure, each one treasures the precious memory of the time that he or she was on the air. And now into Studio One to meet the staff artists. Lillian Sherman, popular singing star, charms not only WHK, WCLE listeners, but those of two national networks as well. Nell Riggs is the veteran of the WHK, WCLE staff. For 11 years, she's entertained Ohioans with her delightful music. As Irish as the Blarney Stone is tenor Dick O'Haran, whose Sunday afternoon Irish program has been a favorite with Cleveland dialers for years. And here is the young man who conducts the popular Meet the Ladies series over WHK, Wayne West. Wayne not only sings a popular ballad in fine style, but also supplies his own tuneful accompaniment. For those organ melodies you love so well, we look to Helen Wine of the Austin Pipe Organ. This instrument is built to bring out the true beauty of organ tone on the air. Stand by for cue, please. WHK, Cleveland's Pioneer Station, is on the air. America. 